All right, guys, I wanted to show you two common things I've been doing in the activity builder that you might find useful. Um, for this first question, we have kids explaining a multiplication problem and also finding the product. And if I hit preview, there's a text box for them to put this answer into. All right, what I might want to do is have a place that says, all right, explain here and then find the product here. All right, I want these to be preloaded inside this, this box here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So uh, this is just a note, right? This guy right here. And then below this, this is a text input. When you do text input, you have the ability to use the computation layer. The computation layer is like the programming language of Desmos. If you jump in here and just start typing initial text and press tab, this just means, you know, what do we want to see inside this text box when a kid opens this up? And if you put double quotes, whatever you put inside of those quotes will appear in that box. So I'm going to put explain, and I'm going to also put um, product. All right, and now when I hit done, when you go to preview, there's an easy place for a kid to do an ex explanation, and then a spot for them also to do the product. Now, you could have just made this two questions if you wanted to, but it is pretty nifty to kind of break those up in that way. The other example here, I have a graph, a full screen graph that I chose for this. So kids can, I put directions here in this note inside the graph, but down here, kids are gonna graph an equation um, with where it crosses the x-axis at one and negative three. Now, when they do that, on the next slide after that, they're gonna have to then draw the axis of symmetry on that graph. So what we need to happen here is whatever they do on this graph, I need it to appear in this sketch. All right, so I added a sketch. I show that if you want. Um, just hit sketch, and there it is, and I'm going to make a, a graph. What we need to do is pull in that old graph. So let's go ahead and go back to the old graph. Let's call this graph 1. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to call it graph 1, and in here, we're going to go back to the computation layer. And I'll send you this website because by no means do I have this memorized. Um, we're going to use the following. So the background. The background is graph layer graph one, that's the name of my graph, dot calculator state, close your parentheses. The next part of this is are the bounds. So basically, whatever the bounds um, the students picked for their, their graph, we want to make sure we carry those same bounds in there so it's not off center or something like that. So that's going to look like bounds colon graph one dot bounds. OK, I'm going to hit done. And it's going to look like this, which isn't that exciting. But if a kid came back to here and they said, let me graph um, x minus 1 times x plus 3, all right, let's change this to be maybe blue. Right, now when they go to the next slide, there, there, there is their graph. And suppose instead of x minus 3, x plus 3, they did x minus 3. And they come over here, there's their graph, and now they can use the line tool to draw that axis of symmetry, okay? Let me know if you guys need anything else. Have a good one.